everyone, and welcome to the West Orange Board of Education meeting, and welcome to West Orange High School. We, um, we're just, com just coming back from closed session where we did the Pledge of Allegiance and roll call, so now we're going to begin public session. Um, may I have a motion, please, for the consideration of the closed and public meeting minutes of October 16th? I'll move that. I'll second. Mr. Calavano? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Oh, that's right. We were all here. Great. Mr. Rutsky, superintendent's report. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do is just kind of jump uh, to B and C real quick uh, because it's only going to take two minutes, and then we'll, I'll ask the board members to step out sure. and sit in the audience so we can do the CUSAC uh, review. But um, we've decided for the public we're going to um, have – the, all the student recognition from the beginning of school up until uh, the middle of December. Uh, so that'll include academics and sports and all kinds of anything that there's a reason to, to recognize students for their accomplishments. That'll be on December 18th. So there'll be no superintendent's report. It'll just be student recognition on that day. Uh, as far as the action plan uh, for the strategic plan, Mr. Menendez and I will be discussing that at the next board meeting uh, with the board and the public just to give everybody an update on where we are. Okay, uh, so if I can ask the board to step out and to sure. sit in the audience, I'm just going to go through the QSAC indicators. Okay, so uh, we put it on the screen. We have it on the website for those that may not be able to see it or want to look at it uh, differently. Uh, this is the district summary uh, the, for the scoring summary. Obviously, our West Orange is at the top, Essex County, myself, the address, and then how we responded uh, as far as the scores, the number of yeses, and so on. This page will make a little more sense as we kind of go through the document. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on each page. Um, this is really more for everybody to understand how this process works. Uh, CUSAC is a, an evaluation of the school district every three years. So the start of the fourth year, you have to do it again. Um, next year, they are changing the CUSAC process statewide. Uh, we're missing that by one year. And one of the main reasons they're changing it is the redundancy uh, throughout the documents that... Um, really cause for a lot of extra work when it doesn't need to be done. Uh, so there are five components to CUSAC. The first one is instruction and program. And the way that the document is set up is on the left side. Those are called indicators. On the middle is where you score yourself. And on the right is the evidence uh, that indicates how the school district is meeting the indicator. So on the left, I'll just read the first one so everybody kind of understands how this works. Um, reports to the District Board of Education and the public on the performance of all students on the New Jersey standardized testing system. Uh, so what that means is we have to provide the evidence uh, that we, ha we present to the board the standardized testing system, which now obviously is PARC. In the middle, we agree that um, we did do that, so we gave ourselves a score of one point. And on the right, under the comment section, are the dates uh, that we provided uh, last year and this year where we provided the presentation to the board. So the state assessment, October 19th of 2016, and this year, October 16th of 2017. Now, um, what, the, what the county team when they come in they look for last year's information and the current year that we're in so if we were doing this process next year they'd be looking at this year's results and next year's results so the last piece that's important as I kind of go through this is how do you determine whether you get a one or a zero if you can provide the evidence that shows you've met the indicator you put down a number one or if it is not applicable, 
Uh, for instance, that we would get federal funding for our preschool program. We do not receive that, so it's an NA for us. They want you to put down a one as well. Um, if you don't meet the indicator and you don't have the evidence to support the indicator, then you would put a zero down. So again, as we go through, uh, this particular part is looking at instruction and programming. You can see in the middle to the bottom part of this page, there's multiple sections um, to this next one, and that's really dealing with the curriculum and when things were approved, uh, the revisions when it took place. So you're looking at all the subject areas uh, going all the way through. And, and again, on the right side is the evidence of uh, when the subject was, um, the curriculum was revised, uh, when it was approved, et cetera. The next slide, we're talking about uh, career and technical education programs here in the high school. And you'll notice on the right-hand side, when you, if you haven't had a chance to look at it, you can see uh, how we're meeting this indicator. The following at the bottom is the preschool program. Uh, and again, we met that indicator. So at the bottom of this page, you'll see a number five. That's the total number that you can receive for the statement of assurance portion of CUSAC for instruction and program. The next section, you'll notice at the, uh, the top left-hand corner, you see fiscal management. So these next pieces are all about fiscal management. Uh, I'll give you another example. It follows a budget calendar that was developed and shared with the board annually and that reflects the applicable legal and management requirements. Uh, we put a one and we indicated um, when all of that information was provided. And so the same exact issue takes place here. Um, you go through and you'll notice that at the bottom of this page we have a 10 because there were 10 indicators that we had the ability uh, to gain. The next piece uh, after fiscal management is governance, which is in the bottom of the, excuse me, the middle of this page. And you go through several documents. Uh, governor, uh, governance, excuse me, uh, goes, has 10 indicators. And again, uh, we have a total score of 10 for governance. The next section is operations, which is at the top of this next page. And one of the things that we have found um, over the years of doing this is that operations is, uh, a lot of the information is the same from governance and from the, the, the fiscal management. And so at the bottom you will see um, we have an opportunity to gain 20 points, which we did based on the 20 indicators. And then the last section of this piece of it, which again is called the Statement of Assurances, is personnel. And under personnel, there's five indicators. Um, and you'll notice on this page, we have five there for the total uh, that we can gain. Now the next document is called the Declaration page for the Statement of Assurances. We have to sign off that uh, myself and Ms. Mordecai as the board president uh, that we uh, clearly went through this and we utilized the one major requirement um, through the Department of Education, which is having a committee to review uh, the SOAs, which again, the Statement of Assurances and the DPRs, which will be coming up, which are called the, the District Performance Report. Uh, that committee, there are required positions that must sit on that committee. One is union representation. So we were able to have Mark Maniscalco sit on that. We needed a teacher, uh, Debbie Reese, who's a music teacher at Kelly. Uh, she was selected because she's doing her internship in administration, and this was a good opportunity for her to learn about QSAC. Uh, we had to have the board president sit on, we had to have a, the, the board president sit, which Ms. Mordecai took time out to do, and then all of the other folks that are responsible for these five areas, um, all of those sat on that committee. Okay, let's switch gears to the DPRs. Now the DPRs are a little bit different in a sense that in instruction and program, they look at the former standardized test scores that the state had. Now this, for, for our document, it goes back to the 13-14 school year. 
And the state populates this document, um, not us. So when you're looking at instruction and program and you're looking at the first few pages, it's reflective of how we did in our language arts scores, how we did in our mathematics scores, and whether we met certain goals that the state had set. So you'll notice in this, on this slide, we have the, the yellow piece, and, the, and I'll just read it. The district meets the annual measurable objective, AMO, in language arts literacy for the district's total population. And under the comment section on the far right, you'll see that it says 2013-2014 English language arts, total percentage proficient 76.7, and the target had to be 79.9. So we did not meet the AMO back in the 13-14 year. Now, one of the um, criticisms of CUSAC is that that's four years ago and that there's been a lot of accomplished since that time and that the, um, the scores are really not something that reflect what's, what's currently happening in our district and other districts around the state. And that's one of the major pieces that's going to change um, next year moving forward to the new document. Right below that yellow box is the, uh, the math portion and it just reads the district meets the annual measurable objective in mathematics for the district's total population. So it was the total percentage was 81.4 and the target was 80.9. Uh, so we met that AMO. That's why that is not highlighted in yellow and if you look under the district score, you'll see that there is a zero in the column uh, for the language arts. That's because we did not meet our target. Again, this was populated by the, the Department of Education and sent to us. But the one for the, the piece underneath, which is the math, we did meet that target and that's why there is a one in that column. Now, at the bottom of this page, um, this is a little bit different than what we've seen on the SOAs. They give you a range of either you get 10 points, 8 points, 6 points, uh, 5, 4, 3, 2, all the way down. And it's based on the percentage of how the students scored. So the maximum you can get is 10 points, and that would be at least 95% of the student, the total student population uh, met the, the targeted requirement. We did not have that, so we cannot get 10 points. And then if you look, the next one would be 85 to 94.9%, .9%, we would get eight points. You'll notice at the bottom, we do not have any points in either one of those yellow. But when you flip over, you'll see that we did score between the 75 and the 84.9. So that's why we have a one in that column which means we will gain six points on the overall score for CUSAC. So um, we, as we move through, uh, we're talking about different things, different levels, and you'll see that it's very similar. When we have a, um, a part that's yellow, uh, we have an issue with that. Again, we gain six points for CUSAC in that, and you'll notice that the subtotal in the middle of this page has six. So that's what we were able to gain from this section of the DPR. Then we move on. We have different sections, different subtotals. You'll notice in this piece, and I'll just read it to you, um, this is the district has no priority schools as designated by the NJDOE. Uh, now that's reflective for this year so the way CUSAC has that is we are able to get a point there because we came, we do not have a priority school. Uh, we had a focus school, so we're able to gain that point. And then below that, you'll see uh, there's another one where in the bigger box at the bottom, 70% of the student population achieved proficiency, et cetera, and we gained that point as well. So it's a little bit confusing uh, when you're looking at this document and it's a little hard to follow the document, um, but the, the bottom line is that this is online for you uh, to, to look at, and the, uh, this piece will be submitted to the state for their review, and then what happens is we um, have the county come in 
We have not had the dates secured yet. They will come in in either January or February to review what we have as far as the evidence and to look at what the state has provided to us uh, to determine whether that is accurate or not. All right, let me just go through some of these slides. These are all reflective of instruction and programming. And then we get to a new section. You'll notice here uh, the very last page for instruction and program, the total points were 100. We were able to receive 85. We believe it's 85, and we will see that. When the county comes in, they will confirm that. Uh, there have been times, not with us, but in other districts that the district did not have the evidence to support it, and that number went down after the county did their evaluation. Then we move to the next component, which is fiscal management. And again, very similar kinds of things, um, but I will read this to you to just get an understanding of what we have as far as the evidence. The indicator is the monthly board secretary's report is completed and reconcil reconciliated with exceptions, unbalanced and accurate balance sheets, et cetera, et cetera. Um, our documentation is to the far right, but the state puts in documentation that we might consider using, which is next to the indicator. Um, when you look on the far right, and I know it's a little small if you're looking at it from the back room, but we have the secretary's report for July of 2017. We have the minutes from September 18, 2017, the secretary's report the minutes again, the Treasury's report, et cetera. All of those reports reflect the evidence that we need for this indicator. And then you go down through and you have all the fiscal with the different indicators and the different um, evidence that we have. And you'll notice that the DPRs are much lengthier than what the SOAs were. There's much more to the evidence. There's much more to the actual indicator that we have to um, provide the evidence. And then you'll notice here's the scoring um, for the fiscal management. The possible is 50, and we have 50 um, for the district. Then we move on to governance. And again, very similar kind of piece that the indicator is up there, the evidence we have to show. You'll notice like this indicator here, um, and you see how much we have for evidence on the far right-hand column. Um, but we move through. Governance is a little bit shorter, um, possible 50. We have 50. We move into operations. Operations is a very interesting piece for the DPR because it really goes back and reflects the SOA um, and indicates did we have all of our SOA evidence for operations. And the answer is yes. So you'll see that there's a 1 next to the 10 uh, so that would be the total points uh, that we gain for our operations. And lastly, personnel is very similar to operations where they are reflecting uh, one indicator and the rest is based on SOA. You'll see that there's a possible 10 points. We have the one indicated there, so we receive a maximum of 10 points for personnel. This is the sign-in sheet and all of the individuals that um, were required to attend the CUSAC review meeting. Um, again, you'll see myself, the assistant superintendent, director of technology, the HR person, um, and, and so on, director of, of special services and those individuals I indicated prior to. And at the bottom of that, myself and Ms. Mordecai needed to sign indicating that we reviewed the documents and that the committee was, was uh, satisfied that the evidence supported the indicators. Okay, so at this point, um, I'd just like to invite the board to come back up. We can do any, we can, uh, I can answer any questions you might have, and then we can certainly open it up uh, to the public to ask any questions about QSEC. Thank you, Lauren.
Mr. Schwarzbaum, do you have any questions? A couple of questions and comments. Um, one, uh, I think it's, it's great that in many areas in personnel, operations, governance, fiscal, we, we are at 100%, and instruction programs, we're at 85%. There's always room for improvement, but that's, um, uh, that's very admirable um, uh, where we are. Just a couple of questions. In th this QSAC is based upon 2013-2014. Where would we be for the year 2016-2017, in specifically in the two big categories, in language arts and in math? Um, you're correct. The, it's 13-14, but that's only for instruction and programming. Okay. All the other categories are last year and this year. All right, so uh, we asked that question as well, and they do not have that answer for us as of right now. Uh, we, because one of the things that um, I spoke to Mr. Mendez about is trying to find if there was any documentation sent the last time QSAC was done based on these areas of deficiencies. Now some of this <clears throat> is directly related to test scores that wherever you fall that's the number you get and that's where you where you are. Right. Um, but right now we don't have that uh, for if we looked at the current score. Right. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the current score on park. The current score on park. On park. So this is all based upon park scores? This is not based on no. park at all. This no, is right. based on the days of New Jersey ASK. And JS. Right. Yeah, so right. I, I, I think it would be good to know, even though it's not a requirement, given that this, the data is four years. It's still. It's four years. So while it's, it's nice to know, but it's more important to know where we are currently, uh, as opposed to where we were four years ago. <coughs> okay. That's Thank you. Mr. Robertson? Um, given that there's a, a, tremendous, a, a tremendous difference between NJ Ask and PARC, um, how are they going to make adjustments in their assessments, and how can you really do a comparison? Uh, that's been our um, claim. Uh, they've asked for some feedback on different things. Uh, QSAC is out there. there. It is in review right now. Um, and so what I believe they're going to do is abandon anything that was prior and have no comparison whatsoever and set new benchmarks for PARC and whether or not they were met. Okay. I think that's still to come, though. That's it. Thank you. Mr. Charles? Uh, just Two quick things. Um, you said that when the county team reviews it, uh, sometimes the score may go down. Have you ever seen the score go up? Uh, the only time we've seen the score go up is when they, when we've asked them to verify uh, the instruction and program, and they have found that what was sent to us was inaccurate. Okay. We've already done that. Uh, we <laughs> we reached out and said, "Could you just verify?" They sent it again to us, and it it was what they uh, how they populated it. So I don't see it going up. Okay. Uh, last thing, you said it's posted on the website or will be posted on it the website? It is posted. Okay. Yeah, Thank it was posted. You. That's all I have. Thank yeah. Thank you. Mrs. Lamb? Um, I just want to give some suggestions as far as tacking on evidence for the um, document. Okay. Unfortunately, this is not numbered. So um, I'm going to go to page three of the document uh, for your consideration under world language. Uh, the addition of the Chinese for the sixth and seventh grade because it was approved a year last year to be implemented this year. Additionally, oh God, there's no page numbers anywhere. Hold on. You can just tell me. I can. I'll be able okay. to find it all. Um, under fiscal management, item number two, we have also approved the uh, tuition rates for the special education students that we receive uh, monies for who come into our district. Okay. Okay, that's not referenced. Uh, so tuition rates. For receiving students for here. Under governance, number four, the inclusion of Board of Education Policy 1120. Okay. That 
it's number four. Yeah. Okay. Um, under oh, operations, number 10, language referencing Dr. Kelly. I know he um, assisted us with our policy, and I believe he provided some professional development for our nursing staff. Mm -hmm. Next page, number 15, as it relates to um, home instruction, I would add number three, the approval of home instructors on our um, agendas. Item 17. Hang on one second. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. That's all right. Instructors on agenda. Go ahead. Item 17, as it references the non pubs, uh, the pass through for technology. Okay. Under operations, number 18, evidence uh, inclusion of uh, curriculum and assemblies. Could you explain a little bit more? Uh, this is about comprehensive um, distribution of information regarding alcohol, tobacco, and drug abuse problems. So I'm sure at the high school there must be assemblies on point yes. in yes. addition to curriculum through the health department or the health uh, program. Okay. If not science, I don't really know, but I'm sure we talk about it to the kids. Okay. Number 19, same under operations. We had approved an the administration had implemented a grid system for security purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, picky little me under personnel, item one, uh, you have an extra one in the certification of the policy. It should be 4112, not three ones. Thank you. And then finally, my last comment under personnel, item four, uh, I would include um, the Marzano staff working group that has now been in existence. You mean the DIAC group? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, since, uh, gosh, 2010, I think I started on that. Okay. That's all I got. Thank you. Okay. And Mr. Rutsky, if I could just add to that. Um, sure. Could you check for the nursing plan? I'm pretty sure we approved a nursing plan this year. The nursing plan under, I guess it's under operations number one, it says July 2016. Yes, it should be both years. Yes. We'll, we'll fit, make that adjustment. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you for all your hard work, and um, it was my first CUSAC meeting, so <laughs> thank you to all the it's department a heads. Oh, yeah, it was uh, about three and a half hours. So thank you yes. to all the administrators who participated and for all their hard work pulling all the evidence together. Yeah, I did it years ago. It was intensive. Yes. Okay. Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, so let me just move HIV. on. Uh, being that I'm going to do a quick HIV report and extracurricular, um, do you want to you open it up to public now for comments on this or you just want to wait for five minutes? It's up to you. Uh, we can wait five minutes. Okay, let me just do the HIV. Good, yeah. Comments by the board? Thank you. It's okay. Okay. Uh, just a couple of um, extracurricular reminders. Um, I know that 
Most of you went to the performance of the high school this past week, our town. Um, really, uh, congratulations to Ms. Mapes and to uh, Ms. Cohen and the entire staff up there that worked on our town. Really well done. Congratulations to the students. Um, very, very entertaining. The um, couple things coming up November 7th, which is tomorrow, the drug prevention presentation at the high school dealing with opiates. Um, really, really fine presentation. I've seen it before. It's very, very enlightening to parents. I would recommend all parents, all parents go out and see it. Uh, while it's very scary, the realities of what we're dealing with, um, it is very powerful and the resources are outstanding. Um, so please, if you get time, 7 o'clock in the high school auditorium. And then for Edison, um, for our grades 4 and 5 parents, on the 15th of November, we have the open house. Uh, it starts at 7 o'clock. Very important to get out and get an understanding of the good work they're doing in Edison. Uh, but again, that's for all parents in grades 4 through 5, or excuse me, 4 and 5. Just a reminder that um, schools are closed this Thursday and Friday for the NJEA convention uh, down in Lenox City and obviously uh, on the 23rd and 24th of this month for the Thanksgiving break. Uh, the 22nd, which is Wednesday, is an early dismissal day as well. So if you're not familiar with that time, just check on the website. Of your, all the schools um, are listed for the early dismissal time. I just want to provide an update, athletic update. Uh, our girls' soccer team um, had a phenomenal year, uh, 13 wins, no losses, five ties. Uh, they lost in a shootout. Uh, many of you may have been there um, over at Livingston. And when you lose in a shootout, it's considered a tie. It's not considered a loss. Um, but it was a, a very wonderful year and a lot of uh, really skilled young ladies. Coach DeVore is doing a great job and uh, looking forward to years to come. Our boys' soccer team, uh, they just won in the state uh, round out at Morris Knowles on Friday. Uh, they are playing Montclair High School uh, went, uh, tomorrow Excuse me, at 2 o'clock. Um, a really exciting game. Again, uh, we were in overtime uh, Friday at Morris Knowles, and a um, very skilled player kicked the ball in from about 30 yards. So uh, really, really uh, very exciting way to win the game. But nice season going on, 12-4-4. and Our football um, last Saturday, a few days ago, we lost to East Orange. Uh, they're 3-5-1 and one right now. I mentioned before that the girls cross country, the American Vision SEC champions, the SEC cross country league race champions, the American division is the first time in school history that we've ever won that division. That is very impressive and congratulations to coach and, and all those young ladies who are doing well. The girls tennis um, ended up 11 and eight. Uh, they lost to uh, Bergen Tech in the second round of the state playoff and the girls volleyball 14 and 9. Uh, they were Liberty Division SEC champions for the second year in a row. Uh, Coach Cruz and, and, and the ladies are doing really, really well two years in a row. It's nice to back it up that second year. Uh, they beat Passaic Tech High School in the first round of the state tournament uh, 2 to 1 and lost to Ridge, uh, which is the number one seed uh, 2 0. So um, very nice fall season again, and uh, we will be recognizing them in December, those that have won divisions, those are the individual and, and group accomplishments. That's all I have, Ms. Mordecai. Thank you. Now I'd like to open it up for... Um, sure. Mr. Retsky, as tomorrow is an election day, can you provide to the public where we have election sites, what security measures are in place since school is in session? Yes, um, the, the election sites have the police officers at each site. Uh, we have uh, also hired an additional person to make sure that the door that the voters would be walking into um, is going to be, uh, they're going to have somebody there to make sure that they get to the voting site, they come out of the voting site. Uh, and we've also uh, marked the, the 100 foot um, from the front door as far as the voting door and put cones out there to make sure that anybody who's out there supporting the two candidates stay away from that, um, that barrier. And we want to make sure that the kids are not affected by that. Um, the, uh, the five schools, uh, Gregory, um, Kelly, 
um, Roosevelt, you're, t you're testing me Edison. now. Edison, Edison and Washington, thank you. Yes, those five schools, and they have a little different plan for security and kids out at lunchtime and things like that uh, for tomorrow as we've done in the past. But um, we're going to make sure that we you know, get around. Uh, Mr. Calavan and myself, others will be going to those schools and spending time there just making sure that everything is okay. Just so we know, it's not just two candidates. We have a gubernatorial race. Sorry. Yes, yes. yes we do. Names. Yes. It's not all yeah. about us. Well, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. This is true. This is true. All just right. hope everybody gets out and votes. Yes, this sorry. is true. Okay. Um, I'd like to invite any member of the public to come forward and ask questions about the CUSAC presentation that we just had, or if you have questions on the agenda. Anyone? Okay. Any questions on the agenda itself? Okay, thank you. Okay, may I have a motion please for personnel, letter A, one through, one through seven. Yes. Um, when we do the CUSAC approval, uh, let's approve it with these changes. Yes. And then we'll add those changes as evidence. And, and yes. just so the board is clear, um, What's presented tonight doesn't mean it's a final document. It's you're approving the process that we went through to make sure that all of those indicators. We may find another place that we want to add another piece of evidence, which clearly we would do. Um, the, the goal is to have it ready for the, the county to make sure uh, they have all of the evidence they need. Sure. Okay. Congratulations to and, uh, Annie Tempesta. She is retiring, 18 years. So thank, thanks so much to her for her service and her dedication to our students. We wish her well. I just want to clarify this is as amended. We had the date. Um, for, I, Annie, for Annie's? No, no, no. Um, for Kristen Gogarty, uh, effective yes. date as yes. amended. Date, yes, 10, I'll get 17. to that one, yes. Okay. Yes. I'll move that. And that's amended to October 17th. Okay. May I have a second, please? Second. Any discussion by the board? Um, just want to say on the merit goals, uh, thank you for increasing the special ed audit findings recommendation implementation from a 70% margin to the 80% margin. Appreciate that. Um, uh, I think all the miracles look excellent. I, the only one I have um, a concern with is the oversee the coordination. First of all, d just so people know what's in there. I mean, at the special ed audit, you have the district's uh, five-year strategic plan. You have the future ready committee, which is awesome. It's absolutely excellent. Uh, the math department. Uh, overseeing comprehensive analysis and review of the math department, um, much needed to improve articulation and, and all sorts of things we can do with that. Looking forward to that. Um, absolutely excellent. And um, what was it on this one? Yeah, the well, I got the special ed audit findings, and there was the future ready. I'm sorry, uh, future ready committee, and the only one that I had any issue with because I think that those are excellent goals um, is the oversee the coordination of the district's five-year strategic plan and that's only because it's redundant with the district goal and, and I believe that a miracle should be something that's over and above and not uh, the exact same as an existing goal that's already been set for uh, as part of what what's to be achieved for the district that's my only comment I just like to add another merit goal the New Jersey CUSAC is also one of the merit one goals. Of those, yes. Yes. Um, Very thorough analysis that okay. we've already begun on that. That's okay. excellent. Any further comments? No. Okay. Mr. Calavano, roll call. Mr. Charles? Okay. Uh, I must abstain from letter C because it involves a family member um, who's a district employee. And I must abstain from the superintendent's board goals due to the c conflict from the ethics panel. Everything else, yes. So number five and number six, correct? 
Uh, no, it's uh, three. yes. And yes, that's correct. And five, five and six, six correct. And, and everything. C. And everything else C. is yes. That's correct. Three C. Mrs. Lamb? Yes. Mr. Robertson? Uh, yes on everything except uh, goal number three uh, under the merit goals. Vice President Schwartzbaum? Yes. President Mordecai? Yes. Make a motion, please, for curriculum and instruction. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Any discussion by the board? Nope. I see none. Roll call. Mr. Charles? Yes. Mrs. Lamb? Yes. Mr. Robertson? Yes. Vice President Schwartzbaum? Yes. President Mordecai? Yes. Okay. May I have a motion, please, for finance, special services, business office, and I'll move that. I'll second. Thank you. Any discussion by the board? No. Okay. I just have one comment. Um, just, just wanted to say thank you for the donation of six cherry blossom trees from our West Orange High School Science National Honor Society. That's, that's a great gift. And I know also there's a young man who is pursuing his Eagle Scout honor who is going to be working on a project that should complement that. So um, thank, thank you to them, and good luck to him and his quest. Mr. Calavano. Mr. Charles. Yes. Mrs. Lab. Yes. Mr. Robertson. Yes. Vice President Schwartzbaum. Yes. President Mordecai. Yes. Okay. May I have a motion, please, for reports? I'll move that. I'll second. Thank you. Any discussion by the board? I have none. Okay. None. Mr. Calavano. Okay. Mr. Charles? Yes. Mrs. Lamb? Yes. Mr. Robertson? Yes. Vice President Schwartzbaum? Yes. President Mordecai? Yes. Okay. Now it's time for a report from the board president and board members. If anyone has a report, um, I'll start with you, Mr. Charles. I have just a, two things, actually. Um, real quick, uh, on November 30th, uh, I think that's a Thursday, uh, is the football and cheerleading banquet um, going to be held at the um, Hanover Manor th again this year. Um, also, I have the save the date for our 7th or 8th annual um, Night with Santa toy drive for St. Jude's Children's Hospital um, and a coat drive for, uh, for local uh, shelters. Um, the time is from 6 to 9, December 7th at uh, 466 Caterers right here in West Orange. More oh. information to file uh, shortly. Oh. That's all I have. My parents will be here probably for both events. All they, are invited. They enjoyed the she was there every year. They've they, been there every year, right? No, just one year. Just one year. They enjoyed it very much last year. Yeah, it was a yeah. lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mrs. Lapp? I got nothing. Mr. Schwartzbaum? I'm good. Mr. Robertson. Not a. Okay, great. Okay, um, I had the pleasure of attending the Board of Directors meeting last Friday night in Trenton on behalf of Essex County and West Orange. And um, the strategic plan for New Jersey School Boards Association was presented there. And um, you, everyone will get a chance to see it in great detail at the next Essex County School Board Association meeting. But the, their idea is to make sure all our students are future ready. And the new president's plan is to work on a pathway for students who are not college bound. It's his particular passion to expand vocational and technical and career opportunities. So i um, looking forward to more detail from our president, Dan Sinclair. Um, not enjoying driving to and from Trenton every two weeks, but <laughs> it was a great experience. Okay. Um, the next board meeting is December 4th, and um, now it's time for petitions from the residents. If anyone wants to come forward to make a comment or ask a question, please come to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. And I see Ms. Gina packing up to come up. Ms. Velasquez.
Gina Velasquez, 22 Corwell Circle. Um, I'm here on behalf of the West Orange CPAC, and I would just like to invite you all and ask for your support on behalf of West Orange CPAC for our Resource Expo. It is important that we support the resources that we have in and around West Orange for our special needs community. I hope to see you all there, and you can share the flyer on social media. I would appreciate it. When is it and what time? Oh, oh I'm going to give you a flyer. November 16th at Edison in the gym, 7 to 9. And we, have, we have some great uh, presenters that will be there in and around, from in and around West Orange. Yes. I've already shared it, but I'll, I'll keep sharing it until the date. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. I'm Jennifer Beezer, 82 Lawrence Avenue. I have a question about math curriculum. Uh, I, I have a, a thought that I've heard the math curriculum is being revised, and I've heard something about the order of courses changing in high school, but I'm wondering if that goes down further. Um, I've spoken here before about my daughter's experience in math last year at Edison, which was sort of a nothing year for her. And now in seventh grade pre-algebra, they're going at what I would have to call a breakneck speed, which is a rude surprise for her. And it's a lot to take in um, when last year was kind of a waste um, and she didn't, she didn't really get any further than she had been in fifth grade. Um, and I have a second question about the Chromebooks. I'm wondering, her, my daughter's class had one-to-one -one ratio at Edison last year, so they're used to it. Are you getting any feedback from the teachers, problems or benefits, or how is it working having all of the students carrying the Chromebooks around all the time now? Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, Mr. Rutsky. Uh, Ms. Beezer, let me start with your first question about the math curriculum. Yes, we're, we're evaluating all the way down to third grade. Um, and one of the things we're looking at is the opportunity for students to be able to move um, into advanced courses if they weren't prior to, the year prior to. Um, so we're looking at that whole segment, um, starting obviously move from sixth grade where it begins all the way through high school. Um, exactly what you were describing. As far as the Chromebooks, yes, we, we have received feedback and, um, you know, we've been asking what are some of the challenges. The biggest challenge we're hearing is some of the devices are not coming in. Every day there seems to be devices not coming in charge. We know from other districts and experience that their first year was very similar and we kind of anticipated that um, and we will continue to kind of listen and see what we can do as far as encourage kids, help kids, um, help the teachers. But we were anticipating some of these issues year one because we knew that's what other districts have dealt with. Um, Mrs. Velasquez, yeah, we, we have that. We've been promoting the piece. I know that um, Mrs. Gogarty has been doing what she can as far as getting the word out and making sure that everybody's aware of it so we can get as many parents there as we can. Yes. Um, a question into, in reference to uh, Mrs. Beezer's uh, math follow-up. Um, I was hearing a couple of things there. One is that, because I remember uh, Mrs. Beezer's daughter had like 103% average at Edison, but it sounded as if the class just was not very substantive. It was too easy. She started, she was taking the same stuff she had in fifth grade. Now she's moved up to pre-algebra, and this is going at a breakneck speed. It sounds like there's some one, uh, while we've heard the issue about not having a good pathway in math that allows kids to get more advanced earlier, um, what I'm hearing now is also inconsistencies in uh, the rigor from class to class. So I have a two-part question. One, how do we address, how, what are we doing to address those inconsistencies? I assume that's part of the overall math plan. And two, um, what kind of support beyond, you know, spending 30 minutes after school can we provide when a child has been through that and goes from the nothing class for a year to uh, something that is 
uh, at an appropriate level, but she wasn't properly prepared for it. What do we do for that kid? Well, I think that we take it uh, one child at a time, individual children, and, and address that issue. Um, there are children who are having a, a phenomenal experience, and um, we're having children who are not, and we need to look at those that are not to determine is there something that we can do to help them, whether it be in that current grade level, the grade level above, or the grade level behind. Um, so, you know, the, the pre-algebra, yes, it is harder, and we're going to look at the pathways for, you know, advancement in, in different avenues. So the, the you know, advancement earlier, um, you know, our, our numbers, we're having all that compiled. We look at those numbers to see how we're doing from, you know, last year, two years ago. But um, I think we individualize that and, and, you know, we can have a conversation with the principal to uh, determine what happened last year, what's happening this year. Two quick follow-ups to that. One thing I was, uh, that occurred to me, if one math class was not at the level of rigor that it should have been at Edison and other classes are, um, is the, isn't that a function of uh, a review of the lesson plans and because they're supposed to be delivering against the same curricula across the board? Well, again, um, you know, not having time to look into any of this or to have a conversation with the teachers or the principal, assistant principal there, I couldn't tell you that uh, one class didn't have a level of rigor and the other two did. Um, that would be unfair uh, for me to have that conversation about the teacher, um, whatever the teacher would be, and, and if, you're, I'm, if you're referring to Edison. So that would be something I can certainly um, speak to Mr. Fitzgerald about and then you know, come back in the next board meeting. Great. Also, I remember there had been some discussion about uh, summer math, potential summer math programs that could do perform a number of functions. One is for kids who needed to catch up, for kids who wanted to get ahead, or for kids who just wanted to reinforce what they're already doing. But being able to provide an array of, of math courses uh, over the summer, is that still something that's being uh, looked at? Yes, it is. Um, we had a meeting last week with the high school, and they have put a couple proposals together um, we're working moving that down to the the middle schools as well that's going to be part of our evaluation this year but okay. the high school wants to get a jump start on it um, for the kids coming out of eighth grade going into high school so we'll be having that conversation about a couple of ideas that we believe we can um, put in place that's going to identify and help students um, so when they move into high school that they're going to have a better opportunity for success in math thank you Budgetary item, um, will you be giving us an estimate as to the proposed cost for that? We will, and um, it was actually presented to me on Friday um, with their plan, so I'll review it and then we'll, I'll sit back down with that group and uh, ask questions that I need to follow up on, and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll come to probably the next couple of months. Um, this is something we have to budget for because it is going to be an impact uh, financially. But right now, it's more important to um, figure out what we need to get in place, if we can put it in place for July 1, and, and then we'll work backwards from there. Anyone else? Okay. I, I, I have something. Um, Mr. Retzke, I just wanted to find out, um, oh, how is the process going in, in finding a new principal for Redwood? We have... Um, we have advertised uh, two weeks now. Sunday yesterday was uh, the, the second, so we will be closing out the applications, um, and then we'll be looking, screening the applications, and then putting the process into place in the next um, probably two to three weeks. Mm -hmm. So we'll begin that process, and uh, you know, there's a lot of things coming up, and in, in, uh, November and December are tough, but we will do what we need to do to get the process rolling. It will take... Um, you know, a month or more once we begin the process because we have so many different levels mm -hmm. and so many different committees um, and so much involvement from the parental and the, and the teacher and the administrative. And so um, it's, it's a, uh, a pretty big task, but obviously a very important one. Yeah. And my next question is, I was going to ask you about the committees. Have we already started to let parents know that they can be a part of the process? Well. My initial letter when we uh, introduced 
uh, Ms. Dr. Carr, uh, there was an indication that when we began the process, we'd be reaching out to parents, which we will be. Okay. Um, and, and so that there's a pretty standard process we put in place and then we'll be asking uh, folks who would like to sit on it and, and can make the times that are available, that kind of thing. Okay. And my, my last question, um, have we, have, I'm sure you've started, but what's going on with the process for the world language supervisor? How yeah, we've, have been asking? we've done the screening um, and now we're going to a committee review. Uh, we have uh, some candidates that we will be taking to the next level. Um, so uh, sometime in the, probably not the next board meeting, the following board meeting, we'll be making a recommendation to you, but we'll see once we go through the process. Okay, great, thank you. Motion to adjourn? I'll move that. Okay. I'll second. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Get Thank home you. safe.